All right, on this episode of Bouts Talk and Bouts, happy to be speaking with someone who is competing in quite the intriguing lightweight bout at Bellator 268, transpiring on October the 16th. We have Raymond Pina and Lance Gibson Jr. getting out there and testing skills, and happy to be having Lance on the show once again. How have the training preparations been going ahead of this one here, man? Oh, training's been going great. Uh, yeah, couldn't be more happy. I'm just, you know, I kept the ball rolling since my last fight uh worked on a lot of things uh yeah just it's kind of martial arts is kind of my lifestyle so i'm always training uh literally week like the week after my my fight i'm back in there training so yeah well even just seeing you on social media it seems like you're always finding some way to get in work like i mean obviously the mma focused training in the gym but just even the level of physical exercise outdoors with you know like julia budd and lance senior and stuff like that like it seems like you're just very on the move just constantly getting the exercise in yeah exactly exactly you know just it no matter where we are we're we're training and we're we're making sure we're getting prepared for whatever the, the date comes and uh yeah just getting my getting the grind on and and keeping the work going it's always consistent that's what's extremely important so yeah, and it was cool last time out, too, and I wanted to just kind of get some insights on just, you know, making some history there, just yourself and, you know, Julia Budd getting the victories in the same night there. I mean, definitely not something that we've seen in MMA before, so a co- cool anomalous sort of thing, and yeah, awesome to see both of you kind of have that moment there, and it seemed like both of you, because I spoke to both of you prior to your respective fights, and you both seemed very excited about, you know, sharing a card and everything like that, so just can you talk about how you know, that whole timeline unfolded and everything like that, because that seems really cool, man. Yeah, it was, it was interesting. It was, uh, it was definitely an experience for us. We, uh, it, it was a little challenging, obviously, because we're each other's coaches and uh, corner. Like, she was in my corner for my fight and had to rush back and, and get prepared for hers. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so it was exciting. It was a, it was Obviously, it's gonna. It was huge. It was uh, a lot bigger than we thought. And, and uh, in the future, we're gonna look back on it and be us both succeeding and a new, like you said, making history. So that was, it was really awesome. At the end of the day. <laughs> Yeah, getting that, you know, sophomore Bellator win there and just it must have been good returning after a bit of a layoff just a year and a half out of the picture. Obviously, certain factors not within your control. I mean, a global pandemic kind of hindering a lot of people's individual goals there. But just, you know, how did it feel getting back out there and kind of competing after being out of the picture for around 18 months there? Yeah, it uh, obviously I, I would have loved to be in there a lot more at- a lot be a lot more active in there but you know it was it was awesome it, it felt ex, it, it was exactly what I needed at the time and uh it reignited my fire obviously because the pandemic kind of shut down a lot of stuff but it it made me want to just get in there as much as possible so uh yeah I'm, I'm excited to get into this next one but that last one was uh it was it was a lot of fun for me so yeah yeah, it's an intriguing upcoming fight here, and your opponent, Raymond Pina, just with the LFA, WFF, Combate experience there. I also noticed they'd fought in Bellator a while ago, and, you know, they're looking for their sophomore effort under the Bellator banner here. Like, what are your, I guess, thoughts on your opponent's stylistic attributes and just general resume overall? Well, uh, Raymond, he's a good fighter. Uh, he's got some, some good wrestling. He's been able to get a lot of people down and in a lot of his fights. Uh, yeah, he's, a uh, he's worked on his striking. I've noticed, uh, but yeah, he's, he's, he's a good fighter. And, uh, I plan to obviously, I have the sharpest tools in the shed and, uh, I plan to execute my plan, my game plan wherever it goes, which is, uh, I, I feel I have a lot of uh, advantages in every aspect. Yeah, I mean, just the tremendous work on the physical attributes and just the martial arts lifestyle and just the individual effort very much there. But it also must galvanize the process a bit to have somebody like, 
you know, your dad in the picture, just a pioneer of MMA in Canada. So probably can provide some insights into the mentality of the fight game, bolstering what already seems like a high fight IQ that you just have yourself. Yeah, you know, uh, I'm blessed to have the eyes that I have in the corner with my dad and, and Julia being around the sport for an extremely long time. My dad being in there when there were no rules and it was really archaic, but uh, at, during those times, those were the, the toughest fighters in the history of MMA, obviously, because yeah. they fought no time limit. They fought freaking soccer kicks to the head, <laughs> knees to the head on the ground, just so many different crazy things that you have to think about. So my dad's been able to, I don't know, we've done challenging things like that, 30 minutes straight rounds in sparring, all the, 30 minutes straight grappling. 30 minutes straight on the back, like all that stuff he's been able to implement into our, our training. And, uh, I, I believe it enhances our experience and our, uh, well, my experience in the sport of mixed martial arts. Yeah. And it's cool. Just some of the, you know, outside kind of fight facets that you guys involve yourselves in too. Like it seems like you guys are a tight knit group there. Like it seems like the beekeeping has been, bit of a learning curve over the last little bit what's the latest update on the beekeeping there over at the you know gibson farm as it were yeah so so the beekeeping's gone fantastic this year specifically because uh in british columbia we got lots of sun we had a heat a crazy heat wave that like we had like temperatures into like uh 105 fahrenheit or something like that which is not normal for our area <laughs> but uh yeah the bees really and the bees really need it. So uh, that we got like over a couple hundred pounds of honey, oh, and uh, the bees are healthy. And uh, yeah, so it, it was pretty awesome this year. It was a, it, it was actually really cool because I, I was kind of explaining how last year we we had to suffer some losses and kind of went through a learning curve. But this year, all that experience from all the devastating shit crap that happened to us last year, we uh, were able to use and uh become successful this year so it's almost like you saw a microcosm of your own individual you know efforts within the bee colony there is that a fair characterization yeah exactly exactly and i was talking to julia a bit about that and i was asking like when we could expect some you know honey to be out there and sold and she was saying it might be a little bit before it gets to that point there but like when can we expect some you know small batch gibson honey out there because i imagine there'd be some mma fans that'd be wanting to grab that i would think yeah absolutely we uh we have a company called one love honey company and uh the whole purpose is just spread love and and sweetness in this world because obviously during during these times you everybody needs a little bit of love and happiness and, and a little bit of sweetness so uh hopefully our bees when our bees survive this next year and uh we come back we're gonna double our colony and uh probably have some honey for sale next year so this year we we had to gift a lot to people that we promised and uh and consume our own obviously yeah so uh but next year we'll have some for sale for sure yeah and in terms of expanding the colony as it were i was noticing an instagram pic a week ago of you with junior there and talking about how there's going to be the sesame street marathons all day once business gets wrapped up on the 16th i mean we were just talking about the influence your dad has and just the generational dynamics there how cool is it to now you know yourself be a father like i imagine that you know motivates an already tremendous magnitude of motivation that much further yeah you know that's actually my what's actually funny is that's my nephew but i uh I, I didn't realize I, I kind of worded it like he was my son. Yeah, I was kind of like, oh, he damn, is my, I didn't know. <laughs> he is my son, but pretty much. Just, if, I, if I could, I'd take him with me and take him everywhere I go. But uh, <laughs> it's I, I treat him as if he, as if he is my son because he, well, he's my, my, brother's, uh, my brother's junior. And uh, he's a special kid. And I just had another nephew be born uh, not that long ago. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm just I'm ecstatic to be an uncle, and uh, I love to <laughs> to be a father figure for the for these kids as well, and a role model for them. Uh, my uh, my nephew Jordan, he was uh, junior. He was born before my my very first Bellator fight, so it's actually really funny because all he does every single day is ask for me, no matter who he's talking to. 
he's asking for me. So, yeah, uh, yeah I just, I, <laughs> I, he has a special place in my heart for sure, as well as my other nephew. So I, I'm excited to uh, be able to pass on my martial arts to them. I'm going to force them to be MMA fighters. So I don't <laughs> care what their parents think. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be like when your dad was bringing you to AMC Pancration when you were like two back in the day, hey? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Just like that, uh, they're gonna be in their uh, car seat on the side or or on the mats training with me. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I love that man. And just kind of you know wrapping up a bit, being mindful of your time. But I wanted to ask this because like we've you know in past talked about just how you look at what you do in the cage is like an artistic kind of expression you've been involved in other similar mediums like you know poetry video editing things of that nature for sure like what do you hope to I guess do in terms of like expressing your art with this coming fight here is there a certain proverbial picture you would like to paint as it were you know it's interesting because I want to what's really important in the in the sport of mixed martial arts is that you flow within the and you kind of uh based on whatever experience you're going through in there or whatever is showing it, presenting itself in there, I'm, I'm going to utilize that as my canvas and paint from there. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to take it step by step and, and just be able to see my opening, see everything and, and allow the art to present itself and, uh, sh- shock everybody with, with what I, <laughs> with the masterpiece I create. Well, I'm definitely excited to see that there. And I think that's a sentiment shared by many people. But just to that prior point of wanting to be mindful of your schedule, man, is there anything you maybe want to add as a parting thought as we're kind of wrapping things up here? Um, what would I say? Uh, yeah, I'm just I'm excited to get back in there and uh, showcase my skills again once again. But uh, I have so much more to show and that's the thing about mixed martial arts is you can constantly go in there and show new, new facets of the game. And, uh, I've, I'm skilled in every single area. So this next time you're going to see that you're going to see my wrestling, you're going to see my offensive, my defensive wrestling, my, my submissions, you're going to see my striking, you're going to see my clinch work. You're going to see so many different aspects of my game. That's just, and the difference is, is I'm deadly in every area. So that's what you're going to see. Well, very excited to be checking that out. And people can check that out October 16th, the preliminary portion of Bellator 268, a lightweight clash between Raymond Pina and Lance Gibson Jr. Seeking out that 5-0 and mixed martial arts record. And just, yeah, really appreciate you coming on the show again, Lance, and providing some great insights. Best of luck with the remainder of the you know preparations and all leading into this one. And just have a good rest of your day, too. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. Thank you for your time.